Psalms 46. And if you have a Bible, you can turn to Psalm 46, or you can read along with the slides in the back. Psalms 46. God is our fortress. To the choir master, the sons of Korah, according to Alma, a song. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth gives away, though the mountains be moved into the heart of the sea, though the waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble at its swelling, Selah. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God will help her when morning dawns. The nation rages. The kingdoms totter. He utters his voice. The earth melts. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Say love. Come, behold the works of the Lord. He, how he brought desolation on the earth. He makes war cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the chariot with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Say love. Father, we are so thankful, Lord that you have allowed us to come together as a church family to hear your words. And Father, sometimes by just reading your word publicly, it does something to us on the inside. Sometimes we read your word and sometimes we are amazed and, some, amazed and sometimes we are concerned. But Father, my prayer this morning is that if we have, as we have read your word, Lord God, we would allow this word to step inside of our hearts and take up residence. Father, we ask that you remove any distraction from our hearts, our minds, our souls, and our spirit so that we would hear clearly what you have for us today. And Father, for that one who is searching for an answer, I pray that the answer is clear and clean so that they may understand what you are telling them as individuals. Help me to deliver your word and help me to articulate what you have for your people this morning. It is in Jesus' mighty name we all say amen. amen. As we continue in our study in the book of Psalms, uh, this morning we are in Psalms chapter 46. And in Psalms chapter 46, it's, it's one of those psalms that, that when we go through tough times in our own lives, it's one of those psalms are of reflecting. So what I'm going to do this morning is going to be kind of different, but I'm still going to teach, but I'm going to preach to you this morning, all right? Uh, how many of y'all here want some preaching this morning? Okay, let me, let me, let me, I know, I know I got a lot of students in here, but let me ask you one more time. So I'm going to need you to help me be involved in this. How many of y'all in here need some preaching this morning? Amen. All right, there we go, there we go. So this morning, what I believe is this is a timely word from the Lord. There are many things in life that feel, makes us feel like we're boxed in. Would you agree? Come on. Do you feel boxed in this morning? I need you to talk to me. I need you to help me work through this thing this morning. Do you feel boxed in this morning? Come on. Show of hands. Yes. Amen. Ouch. All right. Cool. So we, we feel boxed in, but sometimes what we see, the things that box us in are relationships. Would you agree? Yes. Right? Uh, our, our, our finances. Amen. Come on now. A sickness. Amen. Right? A, a strain of work. How many of us get frustrated with work? Amen. Right? I mean, we, we all sometimes 
feel boxed in this life. And, and what, what perplexes me sometimes is that sometimes we get to a place where we don't know how to box ourselves out. Now, I don't know about you, but I've been in a lot of fights in my life, have you? No. Come on, so none of y'all ain't been in no fight? I need to hang out with y'all. I need to hang out with people who are non-violent. See, I'm a fighter by nature, all right? So when the fight is brought to me, I'm willing to fight. And see, see what happens is that what I want to share with you this morning, and this is why I'm just trying to preach you this morning, you are in a fight. Yes. Physically, mentally, spiritually, socially, you are in a fight. And what happens is that when we're in a fight, we need to know where our help is. Come on, y'all. Somebody needs to say, preach, pastor, preach, or uh, help me, amen, or something like that, right? Yes. We need to know what we're, what we're fighting against and what we're fighting for. We're in a place in time now where people are literally dying. Yes. And, and, and we don't know what's true. Yeah. COVID is, is, is now on the rise again. Mm -hmm. And we can say it ain't real, it ain't real. But, you know, for me, my own personal experience, I had a friend that we knew got it from it. So it got to be real some way, somehow. And we get to a place in our lives that, that we're fighting not only for our health, we're fighting for our children so that their minds are not blown by the craziness that's going on in this country. We're fighting for our marriages. We're fighting for our, our own relationship. We're fighting for our own sanity. How many of y'all feel like y'all want to go crazy and be okay with it? Come on now. Sometimes I just want to go crazy and be okay with it. But they'll put me in the crazy house, you know. I don't think they call it crazy house anymore. What do they call it? What's that? Oh, okay. Oh, my goodness. I can't even pronounce that. It sounds important. But see, we get to a place where we, we got to realize that our own flesh can cause us to worry. Worry can cause ulcers, and ulcers can cause even death. And we get to a place that we must understand that we got to turn to the Lord. And, and, and you may say, Pastor, that, that's easier said than done. Come on now. Who I'm talking to? Sometimes it's easier said than done turning to the Lord, right? You can hit these super spiritual people and it just seems like they're, they're on cloud nine, well actually ten, and nothing ever goes wrong in their life. But, but what about me, Lord? What about me? When, when stuff starts to pop up, what do I turn? And they tell me to turn to the Lord, but it just seems like you ain't there. Have you lived that life yet? Have you been faithful in the little things? The Bible tells you. I mean, come on, I think about this. I'm just being real with you. Have you been faithful in the little things and it seems like the little things ain't making no sense? Who I'm talking to in the air this morning? Preach, Pastor, preach. We need to get to a stage in our own life where we can realize that there are two important factors that we have to adhere to. First, we got to realize that this world is under the influence of Satan. Would you agree? Yeah. Turn on the TV. Listen to music. Right. Just go outside and look at people. You know the world is in the of Satan, right? Come on now. Who am talking to right? Come on now, right? Am I just seeing things from a different perspective? I mean, we can just see that the world is constantly under influence of Satan. The world is constantly under influence of Satan. The stuff when I was little was taboo is now the norm. Well, you shouldn't say that. It's the norm. You shouldn't wear that. It's the norm. And it's only going to get you. Go on here. Preach, preach. What you say? Worse. Worse and worse. But then, what we must realize, in spite of all what Satan can do and the influences that he has here on this earth, we must realize that God himself is our faithful fortress. If you're still breathing today and all the things that have been sent your way that you feel like you should have died with and you should have died from, you still say, you track with me? All those things that are sent to discourage you, all those things that are sent to make you think, and you know how Arsenio Hall said, things that make you say, hmm, right? Have you ever been in your life where you get to a place in your life where those things make you say, all those things that, that have, 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 have been sent your way have been sent your way by design to discourage you. But not on my watch. 
Not as long as you're part of Grace Bible Fellowship Church, you're going to be encouraged one way or another. Not that I even have to slap you on your butt. Not that I would slap you. But I'm talking about, you know, like a new lady. Oh my God, the pastor says he's going to slap me on my butt, honey. No, 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 no. Let's stop it right now. I'm talking about like from a sporting event, you know, like when people walk in and, you know, they gave them their all. Then they got this exchange to come out. Then you give them that tap. See, I'm going to give you a holy tap in the spirit realm. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tap you up so you can be encouraged this morning, all right? There, so he's tapping people on the butt. <laughs> Some people will be offended. You're like, oh my goodness, I'm not going to that church. I'm like, hey, I'm there. I'm ready. Tap me. Tap me. <laughs> See, Martin Luther wrote this song, A Mighty Fortress is Our God. Yeah. And, and, and he penned this, this song based on, on this scripture here. And see, what we must realize is that God himself is our fortress. Even when it don't feel like it. Now, now, I'm sure here, and I just want you to be honest with you. Just, just, just honest, honest, honest. How do you feel like sometimes God is not there protecting you? Thank you for being honest. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. See, the Bible never tells us to feel. Because yes, yes. all the time I don't feel like I'm in love. Amen. Preach, Pastor. Preach. Come on now. Come on now. Preach. But, but see, there's difference between the feeling and knowing that I'm in love. You, you track with me? See, the Bible never tells us to feel from one perspective. The Bible tells us to know. And we get to a place in our lives where we feel like God don't love us, but we know that we are still alive. We feel that God don't send nobody into our life, but we know that we still have a family. We feel like we're going to lose our mind, but at the same time, the Holy Spirit still keeps us sane. Yes. You may say, Pastor, you don't know what I went through. Mm -hmm. Come on, now, how many, how many people ever told you that? You don't know what I went through. Come on now. Come on now, right? You And, and they didn't do it with an attitude, too. You know, you don't know what I went through. Yeah. I ain't got to know. I live. And I'm living right now. Everybody goes through something. And because we go through something, what happens is that it's not doesn't mean that we're exempt from going through anything. But what it means in this perspective, if you're a Christian, your whole attitude got to change. See, there's a shifting that must take place. This is why I, I just kind of want to get you guys excited about what God is doing. Because what happens is that any time it seems gloomy outside, any time it gets wet, any time it starts to rain, any time you hear the thunder roar, what happens is that it is only for a moment, preach, pastor, preach, the sun will shine. Let me tell you something. Please listen to me. I want you to turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor! Come on, come on. I, I need you to say, neighbor, not neighbor. Come on, come on. Look at your neighbor. Come on, look at him. You gotta look at me. Look at your neighbor. Neighbor! The sun will shine. Okay, look at the neighbor on the opposite side. We're gonna do a lot of this today. We're gonna, neighbor! The sun will shine. All right, now, do you believe that? Because see, what we can do, we can look at the past points in our lives where we've been through hell and high water and know that we ain't going to seem like we're going to get through it. But God brought us through it. But we forget it when we go through it again. Yes. What if God at this point in time, before I even get to the text, what if God at this point in time is purposely sending you through the exact same thing? Come on now, you know I sometimes say, we're not going to go through this again. How many of y'all been there? How many of y'all say, you know, we ain't going to look, 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 I don't care what nobody say, Lord. I ain't going through that again. And then all of a sudden, a few years later, you find yourself in the exact same position. Yes. Yes. There you go. There you go. <laughs> See, in this text, this is a good news of revealing God's grace. What you would see in the subheading, it's, in, it's Korah. Korah himself survived uh, the judgment of God. And what happens is that before David's death, David arranged this song uh, to, to be sung by the Levite, Levite family. Now, 
We don't know exactly who sung the song, but we know that the song was sung according to Alma. And the word, the Hebrew word, Alma refers to a damsel song or a song that would be sung in a higher pitch. You know, like how I sing sometimes, like, you know, like that. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a high pitch song. So we know from, from historical records that there were literally no women in the choir, but we know that it was men. So in other words, these were men who, 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 who sung soprano. I don't know if anybody knew, who's a soprano in here? <laughs> <laughs> so we, we see this song itself. It, 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 I'm sorry, it, it, was, it was written for tenors, not sopranos. I, I'm sorry. And I don't want us to think about, you know, who is supposed to sing it, but I want us to think, I want us to think about the words itself. See, the big idea this morning is this, no matter what God's people face, we should always trust and exalt God, for he is always with us and always cares for us. Do you believe that this morning? One of my favorite aspects of this verse in verse 1 God is our refuge and our strength a very present help in trouble verse 2 therefore we will not fear though the earth gives away though the mountains be moved into the heart of the sea though its waters roar and foam though the mountains tremble at its swelling say la uh, one of the things I want you to notice, the very first part of this text, for, for those who are going through tough times, for those who are struggling, and this is why I want you to be encouraged. And see, when we see this one phrase in, in the text, it, it, it should change your mind. It, it should shift your thinking. And that, that one phrase, it says, God is. And you can fill in the blank. What is it at this moment that you need God to be? Preach, Pastor, preach. Yes. See, see, the Bible says God is. And, and one of the things we, uh, we see here, especially about this, is we, we see that it's repeated almost three times throughout the text. In verse 1, verse 7, and verse 11. So in other words, God is whatever we need at that waking moment. The Hebrew word is Elohim Lenu, which means God is to us. Or God is for us. Alright? And, and what we see here, what we see, especially from this, this aspect, I, I want you to see this picture also. Because, see, what happens is that sometimes when we get discouraged, we get busted, we get disgusted, we, we forget about this one aspect. It says God is our. What is the writer saying at this point in time? It ain't just about me. It's about y'all. You know that you know how you say down south, yeah. That means all of us. He says God is ours. So in this aspect, there's a communal aspect that takes place of community where God is for all of us. There's a reason you come to church this morning. Come on now, it ain't just for you. See, sometimes we come to church just for ourselves. How many of you have done that before? Yeah, yeah, I've, I've done it before. I come to church for myself. I just need to, I need to get to church for myself. But what we see here, and especially this part of the text, it says God is our. In other words, when we come together, there is something that takes place because we are all of the same family. We all encourage one another. We know that we all going through hell and high water. We know that we all got to go to the neighbor's house and borrow some sugar and flour and butter. I don't know if y'all have been there, but I've been there before. My mom would say, go down to Miss Mary's house, get some sugar, Bible, flour, and butter. See, some of y'all ain't never lived that life. But what I'm trying to tell you this morning, God is ours. And there's a community aspect to this. What we must understand, the Bible says God is our refuge and strength. A very present help in trouble. See, what we must realize, God people should not fear anything because he is our refuge, strength, and always is present. 
See, when we see this, 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 this refuge and strength, what we are doing, we are affirming our trust in God. Sometimes, because of the experience that we are in temp temporarily, we forget to trust in God. We trust in our own doings, right? I can't trust myself sometimes. You know, I walk across the pantry and I say, you know what, Alan, you're going to eat healthy today. You're not going to have those chicharrones or pork rinds or pork skins. You're just going to walk right by them and you're not going to eat anything. And five minutes later, just the natural happen, I'm crunching. <laughs> I can't trust myself. I mean, come on, how about y'all? I mean, there, there are certain things in our own lives that we can't even trust ourselves with. We agree to say we can trust ourselves, but then when it boils down to it, what happens? We fall back to our own human nature. See, the same words for refuge and strength are the words that's used to refer to a place high in the mountains where rock badgers would safely stay. And what we see when God is our refuge is a place where we may find safety and security. Okay, I'm going to say it again. Where we may find safety and security. See, some of us have been so used to doing it on our own, we don't know how to rely upon God. I told my wife, baby, don't worry about anything. God's got this. A couple of years ago, I would be stressed out. I would have grown my hair out in locks. <laughs> you know? I'll be looking at people sideways. You know, I'm like, I don't know. You know, I'm telling everybody my problem, but you know who I tell my problems to? I don't even tell them to you. I tell it to God. Because I know He's going to take care of me. He's been too faithful to me in the past, and I'm acting brand new. Like, I don't know what He's going to do. I don't know. Y'all better stop acting brand new with God. Preach, Pastor, preach. Like he ain't brought you through nothing before. We have all had seasons in our own lives. And, and see, one of the words I want you to realize, it says, he is a very present help in the time of, in, in help in trouble. In other words, when we say present, what does that mean? That doesn't mean the past, right? It don't mean the future. It means right now, right now. You track with me? That, that means like right now, Right now. So God is a help right now, right now. What? Why do you think you ain't jumping off a bridge right now? <laughs> I'm just being, I want to be real. Why do you think you ain't left your spouse yet? Ooh. Preach, Pastor, preach. Why do you think you ain't left a, a relationship that you needed to leave yet? Because God right now is presently in there keeping you together by his divine purpose, will, and plan. Amen. You track with me? And see, God himself, he is present in hell. He's present help in our trouble. And, and see, I want to give you kind of the background. See, sometimes we, we miss what trouble is, you know. So I want to make it, I want to make it educational for you. I want to make it plain for you. Have you ever been in a jam? Yeah. Have you ever been caught in a crook? <laughs> Come on now, maybe that's a southern thing. Y'all know what a crook is, right? Have you ever been caught in, in a place where you feel like there's no way, no way how you can get out of it? Have you ever, let me just make it practical. Have you, ever, have you ever had a bill that it just popped up on you? And it's just like, where did that come from? And that's, that's the name. Where, where did that come from, you know? You know, have, have you ever just had something happen and, and you're trying to figure out what you're going to do? Do you realize that God is there? And there's, there, that's an opportunity for you to increase your own faith. See, what we must realize is that God himself, he, he is the one who takes action to assist those who are in trouble. If you're in trouble right now, you need to admit it. Some people are too proud and arrogant to say, oh, I'm, I'm okay. I don't need any help. And sometimes we act that same way toward God. What do you need help with this morning? What trouble are you in? You know, sometimes we put our own self in trouble, right? Come on now, preach, Pastor, preach. You ever got made a decision, you're like, oh my goodness, if I, you know, Lord, I don't even know why I made the decision. And some of the decisions you can't take back, right? I, 
that's my decision. I got look, you know, you know, my, 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 I would say, I won't say my old folks because I don't want to offend anyone in here. Uh, but I'm gonna say my old folks because that's a term of endearment to me because that tells me you've been through life. But they usually say, just keep on living, baby. Keep on living. That ain't gonna be the first time. Yeah, see, I like hanging out with people who have great whiskers because I can learn something from them. Even though I use basically black five eight, you know, black brown. <laughs> you ain't gonna see my gray hairs until I turn five old, five old baby. So it's still I'm, I'm finding the fountain of youth every Sunday morning, just if you wanna know. I found the fountain of youth. <laughs> the Bible says white hairs are like the wisdom of, of old age, right? I ain't even old yet, and I got them, so something's wrong. I know I got a lot of wisdom, but we're gonna hide that wisdom. We're gonna, we gonna camouflage. But God is the one who helps us. He is our spiritual strength. In Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31, it says this way, but the Lord, but they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. In other words, when God is carrying you through something, you don't get tired. And when everybody is running around and they say the, 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 the sky is falling, what was that, the chicken little? The yeah. sky is falling, the sky is falling. No, the sky is right there. <laughs> right? We have this this vigor, this 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 energy that just takes us and sustains us. And, and sometimes we want to cry, but the Holy Spirit says, not yet. Even when we go through tough times, what we see here, especially trying to understand who God is, we can see, especially in Philippians, we get the physical strength. In Philippians chapter 4, verse 13, it says this, I can do all things through him who strengthens me. See, the strength that comes from you, the only way you're going to be able to do anything and get through anything, you got to do it through him. And the way to do it through him from a practical perspective is relying in faith. Yes. Believing things as though they were. You know what in the Hebrews, chapter 11 says, faith is what? The subject of things what? Wow. Hope for the evidence of things not seen. See, what happens is that the only way we can do anything through Christ is always through faith. People like to take this whole thing out of context. Well, it's the universe. No, it's not. Stop smoking that evil jeeva stuff. <laughs> It's the universe. See, what they've taken is God's spiritual principles and added it to the universe. We can do all things through him who strengthens us. And the only strength that we can provide, even if at that, is a strength of faith. And guess what? The faith is what? Given to you. So it ain't really yours. Come on, who I'm talking to in here? We are to exercise it, but who gives us faith? You know, sometimes you, you, you get to a place in your life where you want to quit, but then there's something on the inside that says, don't, don't give up, don't give up, don't give up. That ain't you, partner, because you know you know you want to quit. Come on now, and partner, yeah. partner, partner, that ain't you, because you know what happens is that you say you want to quit, but you just keep on going. I'm just keep on going. I'm tired, but you just keep on. That's the Holy Spirit. He is faithful to us. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth may give way, gives way, though the mountains be moved into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, foam, though the mountains tremble and at the swelling, say la. What this is telling us is that we need not to fear the worst that nature can throw to yeah. us. Come on now, what, what, what's the world, what, what, what's your life throwing to you right now? What are you afraid of? What are you afraid of losing? What are you afraid of gaining? What are you afraid of? See, what the Bible tells us, especially this, this, this point in time, is that, especially this part of the text, is that don't be scared of what the world can throw at you. The earth quaking, the mountain shaking, Floods, hurricanes, tornadoes. Now those are the things that are external, that we have no control over. But what about the things that are internal? The things that we do have control over. That seems like we, we 
think we have control over, but what? They really have control over us, right? We get to a place in our lives where we got to realize that God himself is in control. And this is what we must see in this time of trouble. God himself offers protection. Finally, we see the word Selah. And we went through that over and over again. This is a common word in the book of Psalms. And Selah is to stop. I believe it's to stop, to think, and to pause and reflect on the things that were just said. It brings me back to one portion of the text in verse 1. God is. What is God for you? Where are you at in your life right now where you just seem like it just seemed like there is no way out? And some of us may have already been through that. Like it seems like life sometimes it, it hits you. You ever, you know, like sometimes you got to get over to California, and, and, and then you get right, you get outside of Prim, and then as soon as you get outside of Prim, you got to go up that that big old mountain. I said that big old mountain. I'm so ghetto. That's all right. Get over country at the same time. But you go up the big old mountain, and then it seems like your your, your car, you know, the RPM just shift. It goes from because you're already doing about. 85, 90 anyway. <laughs> then, you know, you got to push it a little bit harder to get over the mountain. So then the RPM just... <laughs> just trying to get up the mountain. And sometimes that's life. We go through life sometimes. We're trying to get up that, that optional life where, where sometimes the RPM is like... <laughs> you know, if you had a car like that. Some of y'all, some bougie folks, y'all may not have had a car like that. But me and Dee Dee, we had an old white man. And she's scared of man today. <laughs> I love that band. Lou Miles like, I'm not ever getting in the band again. I said, yes, you are. The Lord say so. But the Lord ain't saying so. But that been called God is over the van. But then God is over the hill. But then when we got down the hill, when we got at the top of the hill, it was weird because I didn't have my, my, my foot on the gas. But then the RPM would still go down here. <laughs> you don't have to be there. And then when we get to, to, the, to, the, to the straight land, to the flat land, then we cruise it. Then after you get through the mountain and then you cruise and then you got to go through the turns and tiles of life. Yes, yes, yes. Have you been there? Yes. See, this is why we must realize we got to think about those things that, that God has done for us and through us. You, you know, the, the, the man still got us there. Mm -hmm. It may not have been a comfortable ride. But, but since then, we've upgraded several times. And, and what I've found is that even with the newer cars, it's still the, the, the car, the RPM still talk to you. That's why I'm praying for a Lamborghini. <laughs> Lord, we're going to fly over this mountain. <laughs> I already got a name, Peppermint. She's going to be white on the outside and red on the inside. And I'm going to put the Holy Spirit on the back. We're just going to fly to California back and forth. I don't know about the kids. They ain't going to be able to sit in there because it's only a two-seater. <laughs> but we need to think and, and yes. pause and, and think about the things that, yes. that, that God has done in our yes. lives. Yes. Uh, even in your worst moment right now, think back in the past of what God brought you through. You got it in your mind. I want you to think about the worst moment in your own life right now. You didn't know what was going to take place. How it's going to happen and what you're going to do. But God brought you. I'll give you an example. My, my daughter, she's getting ready to go play a volleyball in Jacksonville University. And, and, and she's getting ready to go in a couple weeks. And, and what happens is the worst point in her life, uh, one of the worst points, probably all the worst points dealing with her daddy. But, 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 but one of the worst points, she didn't know if she was going to get a full ride scholarship. Because her whole desire was to earn a full ride D1 scholarship. And I said, baby, all you got to do is pray. All you got to do is pray. We, we can go back. Well, I told you to do this. I told you to send letters. I told you to do this. And all that other good stuff. Well, just pray. Mm -hmm. And out of nowhere, Angel was working on her behalf. Please My prayer that it was encourage her faith. And this is what I want to tell you this morning. As God is our refuge and our strength, and as we say lies sometime in our lives, we need to take a moment to think back. Okay, God, I was in this position a long time ago, but I remember you bringing me through. Do you believe that this morning? Do you hold on to that this morning? See, especially in, 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 in verse 4, it says, There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. 
God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God will help her when morning dawns. The nation raves. The kingdom totter. He utters his voice. The earth melts. The earth melts. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our, look at this word, fortress. Say love. In this arid desert climate, what we see, a stream of water that was supplied around and abundant was a war, was water that was essential to ancient Jerusalem. It was essential to life. And what we must see, especially here, and when we see this in the text, we got to see that this is God's provision for his suffered severe persecution even the ultimate loss of life for those who didn't know him. But for those who knew him, there was still a sustaining aspect of, of warning. And what we see from warning, it creates this, this happiness. It creates this, this, this holiness. And when we think about water in the Bible itself, it always speaks to life and enjoyment. In an arid, desert climate, if you don't have any water, it won't be long before you die. I will share with you this morning the primary point here is that God is sovereignly controlling all things. Kingdoms, nation. Sometimes we feel like things are all against us. But it's really not. It's just to prepare you. It's just to prep you. I, I, you know, sometimes I have to smile even though, get this, I don't feel like it. Have you been to that place in your life? Yes. It's that phony fake smile. <laughs> Come on, y'all know what a phony fake smile looks like, right? Because you've been there, right? You know what it feels like. But when we think it, when we know God is real, hey, that smile is real. Look, I don't know where we're going to go. I don't even know how we're going to get there. Who gonna pay for it? <laughs> oh, we don't have anything to eat. Oh, we gonna have somewhere to lay our head. I don't know any of that. Have you been there? But God does. I don't know why God is doing certain things in ministry, and, and I've got me, you know, scratching my head. My, my dad always used to tell me, "Boy, don't scratch your head when you ask some questions." He said, make you look stupid. I'm like, thanks, Dad. Love you. He's like, uh, like where, where, where? Remember when I was young, I said, uh, he asked me a question, and I'm like, ah. He said, boy, don't scratch your head. Your brain ain't hit you. You ain't stupid. Just go do what I told you to do. That's how sometimes we are as, as, as spiritual people. You know, when we get to this thing, oh, I, 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 I don't know. Maybe, I'm sorry, I shouldn't do that. <laughs> See, the, palm, the, the point of the psalm is that God will help his people. Yes. God will help us. He's in the midst. And we get so discouraged and dis, dis, disappointed. I mean, I'm, I'm just trying to figure it. You know how sometimes you go through life, you just try to figure it out? And then life figures you out? Life is no joke. See, the great promise is that God is in our midst. And what we must realize is that God is, God in us gives us the confidence that even in the worst trials, the worst of trials, it cannot shake our faith in Him. And see, this is what I've learned in my, my young spiritual life. When, when stuff starts to go, go away, I need to start praising. When stuff goes away, I need to start just getting tuned in and very, very sensitive to, to the environment that's going around me. Uh, when stuff goes away, I need to be very sensitive and, and, and make sure I got my ear. Like, God, what are you saying in these situations? You know how sometimes we, we, we hang around folks and folks treat it like crap, but we say, well, I love them. Right? <laughs> Have you ever been there before? People treat you like crap, but you, oh, I'm just going to stay there. God is saying, okay, look, if they treat you like crap, it's time for you to go. 
No, but I didn't look. Go. It's okay to leave. Let me tell you right now. Tell, bye. Y'all still treat me like that. Bye. Well, I'm going to tarry. I ain't Jesus. I'm just letting you know right now. You get tired of me, I get tired of you. I'm going to stop. But, but we got to get to a place where we got to know that God himself, he gives us our confidence in our own trial. When the nation rages, when things go away, when the, the text tells us that the nation's rage, the kingdom taught there there have been time in our human life, in my human life, I've never seen a time of peace. Uh, just be realistic. Thank God we've never had to go through any major war here on this on this country. The, the Bible tells us prophetically, I don't even see us in the last days. But, but one of the things is, we see the, 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 the only place that ever experienced war was what? Hawaii, right? Or what was it? The, the, the South. The South. Well, what was it? Uh, well, Civil War. But um, I'm talking about from an, from an outsider. Japan when they bombed us. Pearl Harbor. Right? That was the only thing that, that we've ever truly experienced. Thank God. But what we see here, God himself gives us confidence. And he gives us confidence in, in conflict. He is almighty God. He, he utters his voice and, and the earth melts. This is incredibly powerful and, and majestic. That God himself... The general over all things, over all angels, is on our side. Yes. Do you believe that today? Yes. That's what I want us to, to get. God is our hope. God is our present help. God is our refuge. God is everything that we need. But is God everything that you want? That's the question you got to ask yourself. Is God everything you want? It, 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 it sometimes brings tear to my heart because what happens is that sometimes I don't think we want God as much as we want things. I went through my own life and just I had a point in time where God, all I want is success. And what if it is this life in my life that I shall not experience success? Mm -hmm. You ever thought about that? I want to do everything I can to experience it, but what if that's just my lot in life? Will I still serve him? Because he knows how I'm going to act when I get it. Come on now, have you ever had a little bit of it and you turned out? Come on now, come on. You just experienced a little bit of something that you wasn't supposed to get at that right point in time. You just acted that. Come on now, come on. You acted, uh, yes, yes, yes. Come on, have you been there? Have you been there? I need you to talk to me this morning. Have you been there? You got a little something to something, then you just start shilling yourself. Since we're God's people. He is dwelling in us in the person of the Holy Spirit. And that clearly means the Lord of hosts is with us. This is the second time we see this word, say not. Think. Pause. And reflect. 8, 9, come. Behold the works of the Lord, how he has brought desolation on the earth. He makes war cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow, bow and shatters the spear. He burns the chariot with fire. See how the Lord controls the nations. He, he brings desolation to the earth. And see, one of the things we must realize, we got to pay attention, especially to verse 8, because to see what God has done, what we see in our own lives, sometimes it is quite human-like to become so focused on life that we don't see the work of God. Have we been, have we been there? Sometimes we like a teenager playing a video game. If 
you got a teenager and you ever play a video game at some point in time, they are oblivious to what's going on. Or I would say sometimes it's like teenagers or kids, even adults, when they own their cell phones. They're so focused on the cell phone that they are missing what's going around in life that's all around them, right? Have you been there? And you see, what I don't want us to do, I, I don't want us to get to a place where life could be just going all around us and we're, we're missing the landmark that God is saying, get off or get on or do this and do that. And then we miss, the, I mean, the whole house could be burning down and they, you know, little teenagers just still on the game. I just got to get to this board, this level, this level, you know? Have you been there? Probably that's some of us. We're so distracted by life. As I shared with you before, life is not easy. It's difficult. But one of the things I want to share with you is that God works best. God work is best observed by learning about God in His Word and paying attention to what He is doing in nations, individual, and sometimes even in nature. Have you noticed what's going on in the world around you? You got people now saying, what is truth? Mm. Right? And have you heard that argument? What is truth? Yes. You people debating history. Yeah. It's history, right? You, you got all these different things. You got all these things that are going on, and, and everything has become subjective. And, and what happens is that we, we miss the point. Do you realize that we are living in the last days? Mm. Sometime I pray, God, come soon. Mm. Please. These people are going to drive me crazy. <laughs> and sometimes it's the people in your house. <laughs> preach, Pastor, preach. Can't say amen, got to say out. It's not my house, but your house. <laughs> right? Right? God desires peace. He, he proves this by, 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 by granting peace to everyone who trusts in him. He wants us to have this perfect peace. He wants our mind to be stayed upon Him. God works in, in one perspective to lead us to this peace, but what happens is that we forget who He is. Just because you got it going on and you offended and all of that, that don't affect me. I know who my God is. He's brought me through too much. Finally, in verse 10 and 11, it says, Be still. Oh, whoa, whoa. Let me, let me make sure y'all awake on that. I don't want y'all, some of y'all sleeping. Y'all want y'all to, y'all want y'all to hear that. I want y'all to wake up on this one. It says in verse 10, it says, Be still and know that I am God. Y'all better be lucky I ain't God. <laughs> Woo! Y'all better be lucky. You ever told your child to be still? <laughs> I remember, I remember our granddaddy was talking about one of our, our, our babies when they were young, and you know, like, he's like, God, don't it. He didn't say God, dog. He said something else, but he said, God, dog, and she just won't be still. She's just like a worm in hot ashes. <laughs> straight out of Arkansas, straight out of Arkansas. But sometimes we need to just be still. It says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. What we must understand, especially at this, um, this point in time, if you are actually in your life where you feel like things are out of control. Come on now, what you say, prophetess? <laughs> I was just getting ready to say it. God gave you some supernatural insight. Yes. Yes. We are to be still. And then what does that look what's the orthopraxy looks like for being still in the Lord? Uh, I'm glad you asked me to tell you anyway. <laughs> it requires us to stop fretting. Y'all know what fretting is, right? What, what, what's fretting? Come on, talk to me, talk to me. Worrying. I'm worrying. What else? Dwelling on and, and focus on. God says, be still. Well, I just want to think about it. Don't think about it. Because when you think about it, what does it usually do? It keeps you up, right? Yeah. To be still in the Lord first is to stop fretting. Mm -hmm. We must stop trying to control the things in our lives, even the little things in our lives, 
even in things in other people's lives. I can't control it. For those who have kids, you know you can't control everything in your life, right? I used to try to, I used to try to wake up and I try to stay up. And I think this is just a lot. I don't know if I'm getting older or what. I used to try to stay up when my kids came home. You know, have that one eye open. Well, you know what I do now? Lord, they ain't your hands. I don't need my best to raise them. I don't told them. I told them you said so. Not only me, but I told them you said so. Whatever they do out there, one decision could ruin their life. So you know what, Lord? I'm going to go to sleep. And my wife kind of tricked me because she figured this out longer than I did. <laughs> because what happened was they, the girls always knew they, daddy was always up. Daddy was always up. And see, my wife, I'm like, I'm trying to figure out, girl, why are you putting uh, ear, those no, those ear stopping things in your, your ears? I thought it was for me because I got a fence when like, you snore. <laughs> well, what if I stop breathing? I'm going to know if you stop breathing. But she put the things in her ear that if we could be screaming how she did and she snores too. But the best of we be going back and forth. Snoring last night kept me up all night. Just want you to know. But, but see, what happens is that we got to be still and know that God. See, what happens is that at first it stops fretting. It's not thinking about what people are doing in their own life. It's stop worrying about things that you can't fix. How many of us in here want to fix the world? Oh, you can, well, come on now, talk. Woo, that's another problem. She just spoke prophetic. We want to fix the world, but what? We can't do it. Even if we tried with a straight line and we shot a straight arrow, because of sin, it's still bent. I worry about the things that I can control, and I don't worry about the things I can't control. The only thing that I'm concerned about is my people with the right thinking and the right frame of mind. You observe and you embrace everything, but those things, you have to embrace them through the gospel. See, we live in a place and time where it is not really embraced by the gospel. It's embraced by personal political ideologies. And sometimes people don't want the truth. That's why I can't wait for Jesus to come back. Well, because I'm going to be like, I told you so. Now, Jesus, get him. Come on. I have, to, have you ever just want to seek the Lord on somebody? Come on now. Maybe it's just me. Maybe it's just I'm just an immature Christian. Maybe it's just me. I know I know. scripture talks about cursing folks in the Bible and break out their teeth and, and, and take the power from them and slap them on the face, slap them on the cheek. Every now and then, I'm like, Jesus, if you could just get them for me, make them just look stupid. That's not loving coming from a pastor, is that? Y'all pray for me. I ain't there yet. I ain't there yet. I'm still coming. I'm still living. <laughs> we try to do things according to our own happiness, our own ideas, our own righteousness. We try to make the world a better place for us. And my whole mission and agenda in this world is to make sure that the gospel is spread. Yeah. So that when I stand before him and say, well done, my good and faithful servant, faithful servant, enter into the joy of the Lord. I don't want to be one on one side that says, uh, Holy Spirit, who is that? <laughs> Father, did you invite this one to the party? <laughs> I don't know. But I thought he was with you. <laughs> you want that type of conversation to go along in heaven? No. I want the conversation, well done, my good and faithful servant, enter into Instead of that conversation like we never knew you. Yes, you may have done great things, but that would have nothing to do with us. Amen. One of the things I want us to realize, especially when it talks about be still, know that I'm, I'm God. Uh, one of the things, the principles I want you to really get from this is that as a general rule, God requires man to cooperate with him. Do you see that in the text? If God is telling you to be still, what you ought to be doing? Be still. be still. See, some of us can be still physically, but it's hard for us to be still mentally. Mm -hmm. we got to train our minds to, to, okay, look, for one minute, I'm not going to think about what's going on outside of me. For one minute, I'm not going to worry about if these people are going to come get this car, if these people are going to get this house, if my health going to fail, if I need to get this shot, should I get this shot, do I not? For one minute, I'm just going to be still and let God minister to me. 
right? Some of us in here have the patience of Job, but we don't want to go with what Job went through, right? I ain't got. I'm letting you know right now. I ain't asking for patience, Lord. I'm just asking for just just to, just to sustain me, you know? Because you know when people like they say they pray for patience, what generally happens? All hell and high water. Oh, you want patience? Take that to me. <laughs> and your mama. No, I, should say, no, I, should say, I should say that. But, but you, you see what I'm saying? God requires us to cooperate with him. There's an act of obedience that must take place. God is God. Sometimes we're so distracted by our minds and things that we can't control. We, we forget to even open our Bibles. We forget to ask God to quiet our souls. How many of you in here is like, God, I know that I'm dealing with a lot of stuff on my mind. I know that I'm dealing with a lot of stuff outside. God, I need you to quiet my mind. Have you ever prayed that way? God, I, I, need, I need quiet. I need, I need, I don't want to worry about this anymore. I don't want, and then what happens is that God just started to move and you don't even think about it anymore. I think it is those points in our lives when we truly focus in and lean on God and say, God, I want to be still. I don't know how to be still. I've been a busybody all my life with my money, with my, my finances, with my health, with my relationships. I've been a busybody. God, I need you to just help me be still. And if you ask him that, he is going to help you be still. And we see finally that he will be exalted among the nations. God will be exalted. It don't matter what really happens or what the nations are doing or what they attempt to do. It doesn't matter if the nations even cry out to him. God still exists. God is being exalted in the nations right now. This is what I don't want to miss. Don't miss this, this portion of the text. He says, I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Say la. Everywhere in the creation, everywhere, God is exalted. And especially right now. What we consider chaos, God is ordering all this stuff to take place so that he will come back for his redeemed people. Finally, this is the third time we see the word, say love. Think about it. Stop. Pause. Reflect. I'll leave you with this this morning. God is whatever you need. But first you have to realize that you do need Him. Don't rely upon God but then try to do something yourself. Have you been there? Some of us in our own time, we, we say we rely upon God, but then we, we try to take things in our own hand. And I believe the word for us this morning, especially as a church, with all the moving parts that are going on, we got to be still. We got to be still and, and, and ask God, what is He telling us? What, how are we reflecting? What, what should we be doing? What, what decisions we need to make in our own life? I even pray and I, you know, I pray and I ask God, God, what are you saying by this? What, what are you doing in this person's life? How can I help? What can I do to come alongside? How can I pray for him? And some of God said, it's not for you to do. It's for you to sit down. Because there's other things that I'm dealing with in this person's life. Y'all better be glad I ain't a man of means. Because you know, I would take everything. And, and the sad part about it, I would take everything, but I know God wouldn't want me to do that. Do you, do you pray and ask God to help you be still? See, as a pastor, sometimes you, you, you I, well, I would just share, I'm going to be transparent with you. I'm very skeptical. 
Because I've seen a lot of stuff done in ministry. I've seen a lot of stuff done in people's lives. I've seen a lot of stuff done to to to, to Dee Dee and I, and, and we had the, the 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 best intentions in the world. All we want to do is love you. And I see all these things go around. I see all these things go by the left side and the right side. And I, I see people like, oh yeah, we that way. And then all of a sudden, they just flew away. But but you know what what I've learned, and this is what I want to share with you this morning from the bottom of my heart. Let me pass you for a moment. Learn how to be still. Sometimes we move faster than God and we say that it's God. And then as we move, we are miserable. I'm not talking about anybody moving. I'm, I want you to go. Please, <laughs> please. But I'm just talking about life. I don't want you to go, oh my God, that's the same. That's the same. That's the same. No, stop it. Stop it right now. That's the end. <laughs> stop it. All right, let me stop. I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop it right now. Let me just talk to you as your brother. Sometimes we need to get to a place in our lives where we are still enough to hear God. For some of us, we have kids. Sometimes we tell them, to be still because I want you to listen to me. Have you ever had to have that conversation with your kids, parents, right? Have you ever had a conversation like, I want you to be still because I want you to listen to me? Because they can listen, but they're doing 45 mile per hour things. And then when they, they, they try to figure out what you told them to do, Oh, I forgot. That's how my girls sound with deep voices. Oh, I forgot. No, they don't. But do you know what it means to be still? And if you don't this morning, my prayer is that you would experience from God what it means to be still. All right? Let's pray. Father, I thank you so much that you've allowed us to come together this morning. You are great, and we recognize that you are good. Father, my prayer this morning for us is that we would be a people who will realize who you are. We will realize that God is our refuge and strength. Help us, Lord God, in this troubled age and help us to understand what you are telling us this morning. Be with us, keep us, guide us, and direct us. It's in Jesus' mighty name we all say amen.